Chrissy and I'm from the Chattanooga Public Library. We have a very special guest that is going to be leading us in a DIY project. So a special guest, go ahead and introduce yourself. All right, my name is Junie Schobert and I am a science teacher at Brainerd High School here in Chattanooga. And pretty excited about our project today. It's kind of right up my alley of things I'm interested in. So we're going to be making a DIY, a kalimba, which you might also know is the name of a thumb piano. And so here is mine. You can kind of see that's from the side and that's from the top. And the bottom is just, you know, make sure to recycle there. Uh, and just so you can kind of get an idea of what it sounds like, I'll move a little closer to the mic here. I'll see if I can actually tilt this down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so hopefully you can hear that. It will probably sound a lot better in person than the way, you know, the microphone picks it up and processes it and then sends it over the internet and then, you know, plays it through the speakers on your end. There's a lot of steps in there to, for the sound to not sound that great. But it sounds pretty cool. And, like, you're going to make it out of stuff you probably already have laying around your house. We can learn a lot about how every musical instrument works and how sound is made with our DIY project here. Yes. So, should we talk about the ingredients that we are going to need today? We are going to definitely talk about our ingredients. So, let me introduce the third camera, and then we'll get going with the ingredients. Yeah, so excited. Okay, so what we're going to need to make our uh, kalimba, or our thumb piano, our musical instrument here, uh, we're going to need some kind of box. And that's kind of the main body of our instrument. I used a coffee can, like I showed you earlier. Um, this one is metal. Um, that's actually an interesting topic of does it really need to be metal? I think both of the ones that we have today are metal. The one that I already made is metal, and Chrissy's box that she has, or she's going to use out of a, I think it's a coffee, I mean a cookie, cookie tin kind of thing, so that should work fine. Um, but I don't think it needs to be metal because really what we're trying to do is we're making a, uh, you know, a, a, the resonator or the, the sort of sound box of our instrument. And if you think about like, say, an acoustic guitar, that's got a box, but it's made out of wood, right? If you think about a drum, you know, that's got usually a box, or a circle that's made out of wood with different material on the ends. So really, we can kind of get creative here. We do want it to be at least decently sturdy. Like you wouldn't want to use like say a cereal box that's made out of like cardboard because I don't think that's really got enough, um, it's not going to hold up as well and it would kind of fall apart. So we need something more sturdy than that, but I don't think it necessarily has to be metal. We could, uh, so Chrissy had like, it looked like a, um, like a wet wipes tub there, which I think would probably work. Yeah, Lysol wipes um, box, I think that would probably work. Or if you had something like, uh, you know, you could have, you know, I know a lot of coffee tins are actually made out of plastic, you know, and so that might be something that could work. You could also use something that's metal but smaller. So one idea I had was you could really use like a, a soup can. Um, you know, it would be a lot smaller than this one, and it might sound a little bit different, but I think, you know, it would still work totally fine. Um, and so, you know, we could get real, we could go real deep into how the different size and shape and materials are going to change the sound. Um, but for right now, we just got to choose something. Okay, so that's plenty of talking about that. And that's really maybe the hardest part to find, or the, the, you know, the most particular thing. Other things we're going to need are some bobby pins. And when I say some, I mean like four, five, six. It kind of depends on how many you want to use. Uh, and then we are going to use, um, again, there's some... Uh, flexibility in our next step. Chrissy is going to use some pencils and she's got them there on her screen. What I used to make mine uh, is something called all thread or threaded rods, these little things right here. And it's basically like a bolt that you might get from a hardware store, but it just doesn't have like a cap on it. It's just all thread. So that's what they call it, all thread. Um, and I just happen to have some laying around and it works nicely because it laid flat across the top here. But again, I think pencils would be fine if you have like wooden dowels laying around, you know, like kite, uh, kite sticks kind of things. I think that would work. You might have to sort of sacrifice another uh, toy for, to make this one, or maybe you just have some extra stuff laying around. Chopsticks even would probably work. 
So anyways, lots of options there. Um, the last ingredient that we're gonna need are some zip ties. And zip ties, if you don't have some laying around, go ahead and get some because even after you use them for this project, they come in really handy for lots of other stuff too. So that is it as far as the ingredients that we're actually gonna include that are gonna be part of our uh, kalimba at the end, but there are a couple other things that we're gonna need to help make it. And so you can see Chrissy has a hammer there. Um, nothing fancy, just something to hit a nail. We're also gonna need a nail, okay. Uh, so a hammer and a nail, and then uh, we might wanna use some, uh, we got a marker, the marker is gonna come in handy, we'll use that. And then we're gonna need some scissors, and that's just gonna be to help clean up our zip ties when we're done with that. Okay, so that's everything we need. Go and collect all your items if you don't have them already and then we'll see what we're gonna to do to put things together. So the first things that we're gonna to need to make our kalimba are the box or the sort of resonating chamber, the sound chamber, and our marker. And again, since we're not all using the exact same box, there's a little bit of room for create, well, there's a lot of room for creativity in the whole project, but specifically right here, we gotta kinda, of, you know, you gotta choose what's gonna be best for what you have. Because what we need to decide is which end is going to be the top and which end is gonna be the bottom. On my coffee can one that I made, uh, you know, usually the coffee can would be like this, and here's the top, right? But I decided to flip mine around because this surface up here is more sturdy than this kind of flimsy plastic. Remember, we we're saying that flimsy is not, you know, we want something a little more sturdy. So um, if you have a side that's attached solid to the rest of your, whatever your box is, that's probably the side you want to use. So for Chrissy, probably gonna do the same kind of thing that I did and have the whole thing flipped upside down. I think I'm gonna keep it upside down. All right, so we've got that picked out. It's ready to start doing stuff. So what I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do first and then we'll kind of talk about what we're gonna to need to do. So if you look on mine, try to hold this still here, you can see there are actually holes on mine. That was just kind of how I did it. Um, you don't necessarily have to have five holes, but here's what's worth considering. You know, what's work, the way this is working here is that these two little rods are clamping down my bobby pins onto the top. And we want that to be pretty tight. If they're not very tight, then it's gonna be loose and, and not make very good sound. And so with, you know, more holes, there's more room for, um, for some zip ties to keep things held down tight. Uh, you can use, uh, you can see that I used six bobby pins. That's, you know, that's a pretty good number. If you want to use more than that, you certainly could. If you wanted to use less than that, you certainly could. I would say if we're going to go through all the trouble to make it, I would at least have four in there. Just so we can have four different notes. If you wanted to go totally crazy, you could have like 20, but that's going to, you could always make another one later that has more after we kind of figure out the details on this one. But what we need to do is we need to use our marker and we're gonna poke six holes, depending on just how secure we wanna be. We do wanna do four holes first. Okay, so let's look at, uh, basically we wanna make something like these two and these two. So spread apart maybe about, you know, two inches, about the size of a business card or a, um, you know, or a credit card or something like that. And we want two on one side and two on the other. The, each two is, they're relatively close to each other. You know, maybe a pencil width apart, but, the pairs are maybe two inches apart. So she's got the pencil laid out, good. So I think, yeah, right there, make a dot. And now directly on the other side of the pencil, make a dot, perfect. And now to your right, maybe kind of up from the nutritional facts there, yeah, do the same thing. You're just gonna make a dot on either side of the pencil. And I want you to lay it across the top of the two holes you just made. Yeah, just like uh, scoot it up a little bit more. So basically, yeah, and now we're going to make two more holes above, you know, kind of on and continuing on that, the lines that we were making there. Yeah, exactly. Just like that. And then another one on the left. Okay, now before you move anything, if we compare what you've got to mine, I have two more holes right here. And that's to really just help hold this piece down because that's really maybe one of the most important parts that this part here is really squeezing those bobby pins into the top and so i went ahead and i had three uh, zip ties holding that top pencil down so i say let's go ahead and do it and just to make sure things are really snug and uh, tight in there
Perfect. Okay, so now we are done with the pencil and the marker for now, but what we need to get is our hammer and nail. Okay, hammer and nail, we got it. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're going to poke a hole using the nail and the hammer is gonna be the, you know, it's not exactly rocket science here, right? So, you know, if you are not, you know, an expert hammer and nail user, you know, this would probably be a good time to get some uh, supervision. It's really not, you don't have to use that much force. It'll, it'll poke through pretty easily. And so there's no need to, you know, go crazy with it. And you can just kind of give it a little tap and then maybe you're like, okay, I need to give it a little bit bigger tap. But yeah, basically we just want to poke a hole through each of the dots that we just drew. Okay, so we have poked our holes in our box. And so we are ready for our next step. And so what we want to do is we want to make what's called the bridge. And the bridge is on, usually the, you talk about the bridge on stringed instruments, but it does basically the same thing here, even though we're not going to have any strings. <laughs> and so what it's going to be is it's what is going to hold our, in this case, bobby pins up. So if you look at mine, try to get like a side view here, my bobby pins are sticking up off the top of my coffee can. And the bridge would be this part right here that is holding it up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get one of our pencils or whatever it might be that you're gonna use. The only thing that you might need to do is make sure, you know, you might have to cut it, which is a little bit weird depending on what you're using. But we want it to be slightly longer than the width of our two sets of holes, right? So you have like a row of holes here and a row of holes here. You want your pencil to be a wee bit longer. And Chrissy's smiling, which makes me think that hers might be too short. I've got a whole thing of pencils. She's right. gonna get another pencil real quick. Um, what I'm doing um, is like I made a mark on my pencil, oh. and I just took. I'm just taking a pair of scissors and kind of like scoring. So I'm keeping my fingers out of the way, so it, you know I'm not putting a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of like scoring my pencil. Yeah, and but, then and then you can yeah exactly, and then you can break it and have much more controlled break. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so we've got those ready to roll. Now we're not ready to zip tie both of them on yet though. So what we want to do is just zip tie the bridge, which is going to be on the lower part where there's only the, there's not the dots in the middle basically, right? So what we can do is we're going to need two zip ties. And what I would recommend doing is go ahead and take, so take one of your zip ties and let's stick it through the hole on the, all the way bottom left. And I would stick it through from the top. Yeah. So okay. stick it in. Yep, stick it in there. Now, lift up the box, reach around underneath, and we're gonna feed that back through the next hole up, so the hole in the middle. I've mentioned this before, we wanna make sure, you know, when you look at the zip tie, you know, you've got like a flat part and then kind of like, almost like a, a you know, like a box on one side, right? You wanna feed the open end, it only works one way, right? So basically you wanna have it so that when you make it, when it's gonna make a circle, you know, when you like fold it around to make a circle, the box, I don't really, my hands are not shaped right. I should draw a picture. Yeah, um, box part, box part right here. Yes, box. so you want it, yes. And so like right now you flip it around that way. Yeah, so it's not gonna be able to go the reverse way. So when you are sticking it into the box, if you are standing the way Chrissy is standing over hers, you wanna have it so that the box part is facing towards you go in the hole, then up through the next hole, and then you'll be able to um, feed it through pretty easily. Ready to go ahead and thread it through and pull yes. it? Yes, good, now, all right, and we've got our pencil in there, so what you can do is tighten down those zip ties, and you wanna get them like as tight as you can. And so what's happening is when it zips, it's vibrating a little bit, and, the pen, and it's transferring that vibration to the pencil, which transfers the vibration to the top, and as that top vibrates up and down, it's vibrating the air around it. And that's basically what sound is, is just vibrations in the air, which is good. If we're already making sound, then that means we're going in the right direction, right? Now's a great time to use our scissors and just sniff those off. Very good. Okay, so next up, we need to get our bobby pins. And so again, I, while Chrissy is getting hers, I will show what mine look like. And so right now, like, oh yeah, those are bobby pins. But if you look, what I've actually done is I bent them to straighten them out. So they are no longer, you know, curled around in kind of like a, a loop shape and it's all flattened out. 
And so you can do that with your fingers. They're pretty easy to bend. Um, and, you know, again, here we need to decide how many we want to use. So depending on how big of a uh, little box you started with, you know, if you're using a soup can that's maybe only this big around, you know, you might not be able to fit six across there. Um, so maybe you want to use four. Uh, or if you have a bigger, if you have a coffee can or something like Chrissy, then, then maybe you can get, you know, six or even more. You could have eight or, I don't know, it's kind of up to you. We just want to flatten them out pretty much as straight as we can. Trick of the trade for bobby pins. Most people don't know this, but the zigzag part, most people put like facing up, but you actually face the zigzag part down on your scalp. That's what helps it keep in. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Okay. So the, the, real, the real question here, though, is who is Bobby? Who is Robert? Who is Robert Pins? Well, now, and I was thinking about this because, you know, Bobby is, for the most part, a male name, right? A guy's name. Mm -hmm. But I have known of girls who go by Bobby. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that's... You have a Bobby? that works at North State Library. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. I don't know you, Bobby, but I'm using your pins. Um, so okay. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to do some research on that. Maybe that'll be our next video is history of bobby pins. Yay! Uses of bobby pins. Okay, so anyways, looks like we are ready to roll. We are ready. Next step, what we're gonna do is basically the same thing with our remaining zip ties, but we wanna have them go through the top set of holes. And so two of our holes we've already used, so we're gonna reuse them. So, and you can kind of do this however is easiest for you, and it might be a little bit different depending on your setup. What I did on mine is go ahead and take that zip tie and stick it through one of the holes that already has, that we're already zip tied into. And then go ahead and feed it through the corresponding hole on the top, and then go ahead and do that for the rest of our holes there. In fact, you could already go and get them just a wee bit started. We don't want to tighten them down all the way because we want to be able to put some stuff in there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our bobby pins and we're going to lay them out half on one side, half on the other. And however many that ends up being kind of depends on how many you've decided to use. I have three and three. You might have three and three. You might have three and four. You might have two and two. I see why you say that this is potentially the most frustrating part. What's important right now is that they're, you know, laying over our pencil and that mm -hmm. they are all laying flat. Again, though, it doesn't have to be perfect right now. We just, in fact, what we're gonna do next is we're going to use our other pencil and the rest of our zip ties to pinch all of those bobby pins down. And so do what Chrissy's doing there. You're gonna feed your pencil in from the side and just set it down. And now you can go and sort of carefully tighten up those zip ties. Yeah, we're good. All right, now, before we go any further, let's just check and make sure that we're at least getting some sound. So Chrissy, if you kind of plunk down. Sounded like I heard something. Uh, we're not quite finished yet, though. So, uh, the first thing we can do is trim off our excess zip ties. Okay, and now this is where we start to get into a little more fun, a little more uh, musical side of things. This has all been like a construction project up until now, and now we get to start making music. What we want to do is you can, and, you know, there's really a, you know, a, no wrong way to do this, but there's kind of a traditional way, and I think that probably works pretty well. And that is that we have the ones in the middle are a little bit longer and the ones on the sides are a little bit shorter. And you probably, you know, a lot of you probably already have an idea, but like what's the difference between the short ones and the long ones? How do they sound different? And so you should, it shouldn't be too hard to kind of slide them in and out as you need to. And, you know, there's a little bit of tension, but not so much that you can't move them. And then the other thing that we mentioned too is you may want to bend them up or down a little bit just to get them at kind of a comfortable level that you can kind of pluck them with your thumb. Um, and for right now, I would not be trying to get super particular. I would just try to get kind of a general 
arc. So that looks good. How many did you end up using? Eight thumbnail yeah. pins there. Very yeah. nice. Okay. Uh, and now, are you getting sound from all of them? I heard lots of sound. It didn't sound particularly musical on my end, but again, that might be part of the internet. No, I'm just I'm not throwing any shade. I'm just commenting on the you know the compression of, of Zoom. Okay. Shady. <laughs> a little in here, isn't it? So, and it, you know, at this point, it's kind of up to you. Are you happy with it how it is, or do you want to try to tweak them to get different notes? If you wanted to get very technical, you could, most phones, you know, smartphone, you can download a tuner app for free. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. So we know, we, we've talked about most of this already, but when, when we pluck one of our little bobby pins, it, and you can see it, it wiggles up and down, it vibrates, right? And as it vibrates, it is transferring that vibration to the bridge. What it's doing is as the bobby pins vibrate, they're you know pushing up and down on the bridge on the bridge, and the bridge pushes up and down on the top of the cookie tin. And as that cookie tin gets pushed up and down, it's vibrating, and it is able to push a lot of air up and down. On the little music box that Chrissy had, and that little thing, if you look close in there, and you, but there's that, that wheel that's turning, right? And, at, and there's little knobs on, little bumps on that wheel. And as Chrissy turns the crank, that wheel spins, you know, it rotates around, and those little knobs hit pieces of metal that are different lengths, right? So on the left-hand side of, of the screen there, uh, there's, a, it, it looks almost like a cone, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's little pieces of metal, they're different lengths, and they, they kind of go from shorter on one end to longer on the other end. So ours kind of is, you know, laid out with longer in the middle and shorter on the sides. That music box is more like long on one side and they just get shorter and shorter. You know, there's a ton of room for experimentation with this with, um, you know, you can slide the bobby pins in and out to get different lengths. Um, you know, like I said, the other thing we didn't talk about really is I assume everyone used probably the same type of bobby pin on their instrument. So my bobby pins might be different from Chrissy's and Chrissy's might be different from somebody else's. I actually put multiple different kinds of bobby pins because I wanted to see. Oh, okay. So, well, what do you see? Do you notice any um, I do. differences? I do. Um, so, the nicer, more expensive ones, um, like, ha hold the tension mm -hmm. you know, better um, than, like, like, this one is a more flimsy metal. And, and also, looking at that one, I might have a suggestion that might help you on that one. Bend that one up a little bit away from the uh, the metal. Maybe I don't know how far you went, but try it. Uh. <laughs> and so, if you've ever looked at a guitar or a violin or a piano, even or any instrument with strings, the strings are different lengths, or you can at least change the length of the string with like your fingers, right? And that's how you play it. Uh, but there are also different thicknesses of strings. And so the thicker strings, there's more mass. So again, we talked about that more mass, you know, it's going to vibrate slower. It's a lot more stuff to turn around, right? Versus a little skinny string is going to vibrate much faster. And so it would be the same for our bobby pins. If we had a really thick, heavy duty bobby pin, Ooh. it's going to, you know, versus a little, ding, a little uh, skinny. They have so many different types of bobby pins. I wish I, like, they've got those, like, super, they're super heavy duty. Um, I mean, I've seen ones that are real thick, too. Yeah, they're really, really thick. Yeah. Um, and so there, like I said, there's a lot of room to experiment and kind of take, you know, the cool thing about this is that I have, I mean, I, I went out and bought nothing to make this. Mm -hmm. I had all this stuff sitting around. <laughs> and so you really could experiment around with this and make some pretty cool stuff without having to really invest much. Or if you wanted to, you know, kind of take it to the next level, you certainly could take this very simple design and, you know, invest a little bit more time and resources into making a really cool one. So. I love it. Yeah. And that's a great challenge to throw out to the masses. So if Hashtag Chattanooga Library, or I don't even know. <laughs> Hashtag MPRL 2020. 
So <laughs> if you do this at home, please um, take a video, take a picture, maybe even try to do a little song. I'm going to try to do that and maybe put it at the end of this video if it works. Um, but if you do, make sure to tag us on Facebook or Instagram. And thank you so much, Junie, for coming back and teaching us this wonderful DIY. I'm sad that you can't hear. Uh, well, we'll have to, once we, um, you know, come <laughs> on the other side of global pandemics, maybe we'll have a, uh, a jam uh, a concert. Session? Yeah, a jam session. <laughs> I am so excited for that. So thank you again, and thank you all at home. My pleasure. Yep. And until next time. Until next time. Bye.